Oh, yeah? Like, yeah, that. You want to drink some water? All right. Great to have everyone here. Thanks, Jeff, for uh, giving me the opportunity to preach. Uh, let me open um, my sermon here with the word of prayer as well. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and for bringing us all together, Lord. And thank you so much for your word and, uh, and a chance to um, edify our ears with the with the uh, word of your Bible. Um, give me the fill, fill me up with your Holy Spirit so that I can uh, preach your word boldly. And in Jesus' name, Amen. So the uh, topic of my sermon is going to be forgiveness, and uh, there's three different points of forgiveness that you can find in the Bible. Uh, three main points that is. One is God's forgiveness toward us um, in terms of our eternal salvation. Uh, the second point is God's forgiveness toward us in terms of our daily life and um, not punishing us for our sins on this earth. And the third is our forgiveness toward others and our ability to be you know, loving to our brothers and sisters in Christ. So um, I was going to start in Matthew 6. And um, we've already read the Lord's Prayer there through verse uh, 13. But in verse 14 it says, uh, the Bible reads, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So uh, the first thing that we have to remember is that God has forgiven us, the Lord God has forgiven us more than we can ever imagine. And um, when we receive Christ as our Savior, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved, um, we know that he saves us from hell. He certainly saves us from the eternal damnation of hell um, because the Bible says that for as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. And we've all come uh, sin and come short of the glory Amen. of God. And, um, and of course, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he gives us a gift, and the Bible calls that, if you turn to Colossians chapter 1, um, Colossians chapter 1. The Bible actually calls it a gift. If we look at verse 13, uh, verse 13, it says, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and hath tra translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So the Bible says that because we have redemption uh, through the blood of Jesus, once we believe on the fact that he died, buried, and rose again, um, that is kind of his forgiveness of, of sin. So we have to realize that God um, for, has forgiven us more than we can imagine, because we can never imagine what hell is like. And thankfully, if we believe in Jesus, then we don't have to go there. Amen. That's right. Amen. So, uh, so because God has forgiven us to this degree, I think he expects us to, you know, forgive others for things that, that are, you know, obviously smaller than um, having to go to hell. So, uh, next place I want to turn to is Matthew 18. So Matthew chapter 18. When you're there, say amen. This is a famous passage here about forgiveness. Let's look at verse 21. Uh, it says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, a talent in the Bible is a measure of money. And if you, you know, look it up in different scriptures, it's between 50 or 60 pounds. So imagine like 50 pounds of gold and 10,000 times that. That's what he owed this guy. Um, in verse 25, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. So he, he's asking his, um, his boss here, his Lord, for you know, forgiveness, for, for a little bit of patience. You know, he, he's not asking for forgiveness all the way um, just yet, but he, he's just asking for a little bit of patience. 
And then in verse 27 it says, Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave the debt because he could never pay you know, all this insane amount of money that he owed, the 10,000 talents. So he loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. So he's ready to strangle his fellow man because he owes him just a little bit, you know, a little sum of money. Uh, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. So again, he just wants a little bit of you know, patience, a little grace. Um, he says he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what, what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. And then his Lord, after that he had called him, and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all thy I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. Wroth means very angry, like extremely angry, and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother to trespasses. So, you know, it, it is one thing, and, and when we do, you know, pray to God for forgiveness, if, if we ask for a little bit of, you know, grace in our lives, we all sin, right? We all sin every day. We sin without even knowing it. The Bible says, forgive me of my secret faults. Um, so it is righteous to ask for forgiveness, but we also have to realize that we have to forgive um, other people that sin against us, too, in our lives. Right. So that we can, you know, be Amen. worthy of that forgiveness in our lives, not have to deal with the judgment of God in our lives, Amen. and and not have to, you know, and of course that has nothing to do with salvation. But the point is, you don't want God's, you want as little bit of, you know, as little of God's judgment in your life as you can possibly have, Amen. if you can get away with it. <laughs> so, so that's the, the reason that we should forgive, you know, others is because. God has forgiven us to such a large degree. And when we do forgive others, God will be more generous in forgiving our sins on this earth um, so, so that it can be well with us. And, and God actually promises, you know, for certain commandments, he promises certain things, such as uh, when Jesus said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It says, that's the first commandment with promise, <laughs> that thy days may be long with, me, with thee on the earth. Amen. So... So there are many promises in the Bible that we can um, that we can achieve and we can get. Uh, let's turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter four. Just a few more uh, different points here, because when you compare Scripture with Scripture, you can find obviously it says the same thing. There's no contradictions, but um, also you find little different points that you can um, kind of piece the puzzle together a little bit. Where am I going here? Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 32. And be ye kind to one another, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So when it says there at the beginning of the verse, be kind one to another, uh, tender hearted, it means that we forgive others out of a loving heart, out of the kindness of our heart. We shouldn't be, you know, begrudgingly forgiving others. We shouldn't be, you know, Okay, you know, I'll let it slide. I'll, I'll forgive you. I guess. But we have to um, basically have a kind heart about it, um, and that goes back to praying every day that you'd be filled with the Spirit, and that you'd be walking in the Spirit and not walking after the flesh. So, um, so we have to do it with a kind attitude about it. Let's also turn to the Book of Mark, chapter eleven. Mark 11, verse 25. Verse 25 says, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father for, which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So Jesus is saying here in verse 25, it says, When ye stand praying, when you're actually praying, you can actually tell God that you forgive 
someone in your heart and, and demonstrate to God that you've forgiven this person um, when it comes from the bottom of your heart when you're speaking to God. So that's another way you can forgive someone, even if you don't have a chance to see them. You know, you can actually tell God because God is the one that searches the soul. Amen. He knows Amen. what's in the bottom of your heart. He knows all your secrets and everything. Um, the hairs on your head are numbered. So everything, God knows everything about us. Um, let's go to the book of First John, chapter one. It's a famous passage here, or famous verse rather. I'll just read it. It says, "If we." Confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God is, of course, going to be faithful to us. And uh, we can also turn to the book of Colossians again, chapter 3. chapter 3 and verse 13 it says forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do ye and this is part of the passage about the uh, full armor of God there so forbearing one another means forbearment if you think of a loan um, like a student loan forbearment means to you know have a little bit of a deferment period to give someone time give someone a little bit of grace and forgiveness, of course, is just, you know, um, the absolution or forgiveness um, absolutely of all sins. So uh, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So we have to remember that because Jesus forgave us, therefore we should be uh, forgiving of others if we've been wronged in our lives. So uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for this time together and for allowing me to uh, preach your word. And um, let us all come back here safely again next time in uh, April and hopefully we can do it again uh, bigger and better. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. 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 Nice.